Hi, my name is Sean Beasley, and I'd like to welcome you to this screencast about the OTRS 3.2. In the OTRS 3.2, there has been some great improvements in customer-centric thinking. There's also been some improvements on the administration side. There's been some improvements in the interface and then the code, as well as speed. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to show you all some of the new things that will await you if you have not tested the OTRS 3.2 beta. So let's get started. When you first log in, you're going to see the basics of OTRS. There hasn't been a whole lot of changes here. There is no new dash. There is one new dashboard widget. That's the out of office widget. So if I have the out of office widget here turned on and somebody is out of office, there will be a notification widget here to let me know who's out of the office. Going into the admin interface, I'm going to go ahead and take Miss Josephine Gunter, and I'm going to set her out of office message so that we can see what this widget will look like. So we're gonna turn on her out of office. We're going to set it for today, which is the 1st of December until the 2nd of December. And I'll go ahead and give her a couple more days vacation and click Submit. Now when I refresh my dashboard, I'll see that Josephine Gunter is out of office. That's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful improvement because in the original out of office feature, there was no indication of who was out of office until you decided to create a ticket. So here you have a little bit of a free busy time information center and I hope that there'll be some more improvements in this uh, area uh, right now at least you have a heads up who's going to be off and until when and which the, uh, when you do a mouse over you'll get their email address other than that there's nothing new in the dashboard what you might notice is here is um, the the order of the menus have changed here now you'll see customer uh, and tickets and statistics. In OTRS 3.1 and earlier versions, there was uh, the dashboard, the tickets, you have got the survey module installed, the statistics, and then the customers. In OTRS 3.2, you're going to see that the customers menu has moved up to the front. So when I now click on the customers menu, I'm actually going to get a drop down, which is Coming up to my next point, the Customer Information Center, the absolute highlight of OTS 3.2. If you have a customer service department, if you have customer mm, service managers uh, or service managers that are dealing with customers, if you have sales employees that are trying to find out information about customers before they do sales pitches, anything, anybody dealing with customers directly that want to see the big picture, this is going to be the feature that's going to just blow your socks off. So this is the customer information center. I have to have a valid customer ID. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the HX search feature to search for this customer ID. Additionally, I could search for a, a username, but I'm going to get the same information at the end of the day. So I either search for one user or I search for the customer ID, but I'm gonna get the same display. Now what I see here is I see the Customer Information Center in OTRS is built similarly to the dashboard. I have a Settings tab. In the Settings tab, I can turn on and off the modules as I see fit. And what you're going to see here is I have a range of tools at my disposal, which is now going to help me work through problems with customers together. It happens every day. You have a customer and there's some problems and you want to get a big picture of what's going on and you're working with complicated searches and trying to piece together the puzzles. Here you have a complete overview in the customer user sections of all of the customer logins that are valid within the system, who they are, their information, so basically their real name composed of the first name, last name, and email address as you would see it in any mail client. Then you see a list of open tickets these are search filters. I'll show you how they work in a minute. 
a list of closed tickets. You can create a ticket for any of these users and or an email ticket for any of these users directly out of this mask by just clicking on create as soon as the customer calls, entering your subject. clicking create. Well, I have to choose a queue as well. Let's go ahead and choose complaints at this point. So, when I go back to the customer information center and I look for test AG now, I'll see that there's a new ticket created for this user. He now has three tickets versus the original two that he had. How does this filter work? This filter is basically a search filter. Now it doesn't open up in a new tab. So every time you go to the customer information center, you're going to be required to put in the customer information again, just like I'm doing here. This information is not saved uh, in the session at this point. So every time I navigate away from the screen, I'm going to have to give in the information again. What I would recommend here is if you want to use these search filters or if you want to look, modify the customer information just to be on the safe side, go ahead and right click on it open up a new tab or even a new window and here you'll see that the search then shows all of the open tickets. Let's say that this ticket has been closed by an agent. You'll see that here also the text boxes are uh, a little bit smaller now for the note fields within the interface. Used to accommodate uh, better, sc better screen real estate, but uh, in most modern browsers, you can actually pull this and make it a little bit larger, or you have the, uh, well, we had the ability to go full screen here. The full screen has been turned off. So, hmm, maybe it's a bug. Anyways, so I'm gonna go ahead and click Submit. Now that ticket's closed. I'll close this window so that I can get back to my Customer Information Center and refresh my screen. And now I'll see that this is updated and that this ticket is closed. Additionally, here up in the URL, you can actually um, switch customers quite conveniently just by adding the other, uh, the other customer ID here in the system. Let me add a customer ID so that you'll see how that works. So here I'm logged in as admin. I'll go to my customer section. I see here all of my customer IDs, test AG, test AG. I'm going to create a new customer using a password tool that I have to create a test customer. And the customer ID is going to be OTRS org. Going back into my customer information center here, I can just now um, replace OTRS.org. And now see, I can quite comfortably navigate um, to a different company in that fashion. I'm hoping that one day, We'll have a, uh, well, they soon will have a field here where we can change the customer somewhere on this screen. But right now, you have to do it via the URL. What else do we see? We see all the reminder tickets for this company with your typical filters, whether they're my lock tickets, tickets in my queues, tickets in all queues. You'll see escalated tickets, new tickets, open tickets needed to be answered. And this works exactly like the dashboard filter with the exception that it's only looking for tickets of this customer ID. Really awesome, really, really nice. Here to the right, you have the customer company information, so you can see all about the customer company. Here I'm gonna right click and open up this in a new window. And you can see I can easily change any information here. So they've changed their website. It's not www, it's www.test.co.uk. And when I then close this, and I refresh my screen and I'll see that this information has been updated for all of the other users within the company. Here I have a company status and this is really, really good. This is probably going to be one of the best things uh, on, the, on, on the face of the planet as far as customer service is concerned because I can quickly here get to all escalated tickets, I can get to all open tickets, I can get to all closed tickets and I can get to all tickets. So I have four filters here as well in this very small dashboard, which allow me with one click to see the status and the mood of any customer. 
And in a nutshell, that's the customer information center. So I hope that everybody's going to be as excited about that as I am. Switching back to the admin section of OTRS for a moment, here we're in the customer management section. Up until this point, we've had very limited ability to test the customer front end in case of errors. If you remember within the previous versions of OTRS, there was an option that you could turn on called switch to, you, uh, switch to agent. Using switch to agent allows you to quickly log in as any other agent. I'm currently logged in as super admin, which is the username admin. Here you see the username, which leads to the preferences screen in the upper right hand corner. And if I want to test the permissions, for example, for Josephine Gunter, because she's on vacation and she's opened up a ticket that says she's having issues, then I can switch to agent, allowing me to then test her permissions and uh, make changes for her in her absence. When I log back out and log back in as the admin user, uh, that's the root user, I don't want to do that. It even tells you you shouldn't work as root user. So I'll go ahead and log back out. And then I can log back in as my default admin. You were able to turn this on within the sysconfig if you just looked for switch to and then clicked search then you would be offered the subgroup core with 30 elements in the group framework. The same path you would use if you went over here and chose the drop down framework and went to core. And scrolling down once you get into the system configuration settings, had the option to switch to user. Now with OTRS 3.2, we also have the option to switch to customer. We can also say who is able to switch to customer because you don't just want everybody logging in as a customer. So in this example, we have the group admin. Here I'm logged in as a normal user. If I were to search for a customer, for example, going here, clicking on his name, and then going to overview or going to customer user administration as an agent. I would be able to search for and modify customer information, but I wouldn't see a link here on the right hand side to be able to log in as a user. Switching back to my admin screen, I see that I have the ability to log in as a normal customer as well. So here if I switch to customer, I'll automatically be directed to the public P, uh, to the customer PL of the user and be able to verify if they're actually seeing their service requests or not as sometimes there are problems reported by customers saying that they are not able to view tickets or change preference settings here any service agent with the proper permissions will be able to verify this switching back to an OTRS 3.1 and earlier versions, I want to show you something that's going to be hidden from the feature list, but is also a very valuable addition in your daily lives. It's going to be in the search functions. There's actually two things, but the one that I found that's the most interesting for me is actually being able to search for and find tickets more quickly. So I generally know what I'm looking for when I search for something, and if I do a good job, I only get one result. In earlier versions, if I were to search for a ticket number, for example, then I would find there's only one ticket in this system that actually applies to the search, and I have to go through the process of clicking on the ticket to actually getting in there. Now, it doesn't seem like it's really that much work, right? But at the end of the day, these clicks are costing me time. And I think that this next feature, which is, as I said, a little bit of a hidden feature, is going to be something that's going to save a lot of call centers, agents, a lot of time, especially when they're doing uh, point, uh, pointed searches, which, is, uh, which are only giving them one result. Now, I just created a ticket for our test user. I click on the search feature, and I want to search for, let's say, the customer ID. 
otrs.org, and they only have one ticket open. I'm not going to be required to actually open this ticket. It's automatically going to zoom in to the only open ticket. Now, this threw me for a loop the first time I, I, we upgraded because I thought my search profile was broke. I kept clicking on this search profile, which I knew generally gave me a lot of options or a lot of open tickets, and there was only one uh, open ticket at this time, which I didn't know. It took me quite some time to figure it out. And this ticket kept opening. I find it to be a wonderful feature. It's a little bit of a hidden feature. I hope you enjoy it as well. The next thing you'll notice is when you go into the search, the search attributes for the OTS 3.2, that there are the create times, the change times, the close times, and now you can even search for the escalation times before or after between, which makes the search much more powerful. In OTS 3.1 and earlier versions of OTRs, we didn't have this capability. So you were basically bound to the escalation view, which didn't leave you for a lot of options for filtering. Moving back into the administration side of OTRS, it wasn't possible in earlier versions to turn off the ticket type. There was a lot of extravagant coding that needed to be done in order to make sure that you could use the ticket type feature and set default types for your customer users. Now it's possible to configure this behavior using ticket frontend customer ticket message. If you go into the group ticket and the subgroup front end customer ticket view new, then you'll be able to turn on or off the ticket type feature. You'll also be able to set a default type when using this feature. One small change that may be exciting for some people is creating statistics. Creating statistics based on time frames is been made a little bit more flexible in the fact that we've added the possibility to add weeks to your time frames. When I choose ticket accumulation, for example, and select next, any of the time fields that I have down at the bottom will not only have seconds, minutes, hours, days, and previously months and years, but now weeks has been added as an additional feature. With the introduction of OTRS 3.1, web services were introduced within to OTRS, making it easier to integrate your OTRS within, a current, within your current infrastructure. In OTRS 3.2, it has been extended. Up until this point, there's only been one type of web service, and this web service was for the SOAP XML. The connector was for the tickets. Now we actually have a connector for the FAQs as well. In order to make use of this, we're going to have to actually install the FAQ because the connector is delivered with the FAQ package in and of itself. By refreshing the online repository and clicking on install, I'll be installing the FAQ directly from the online repository. Here with the install information screen, informing me that I need to make sure that my database accepts a certain size package. I can then click continue and then I'll get post information, post install information about the different groups and permissions that are going to be set within OTRS in order so that I can actually use the FAQ package in and of itself. So I'll go in and update my group information for my different agents. For example, my test agent will then receive the proper permissions that he needs for the FAQ and upon next login will be available for them. As well as the admin user, I need to pass him the proper permissions. Then I will log out as the super admin log in again and I will have the FAQ readily available for use. When I now go into admin into the web services and take my test for FAQ connector I can then choose to add an operation. The operations that are available now via the HTTP SOAP connector which is the basic network transport connector provided by the OTRS web services interface 
I can choose a language list, I can choose the public category list, I can choose the public FAQ get and the public FAQ search. For more information on this, please go to the development documentations available on docs. For more information about this, please read the met. For more information about the functions, please read the development documentations or consult the community for more help. Thank you for watching this short but informative video. Well, it's actually one of the longest videos that I've made on this channel at this point about OTRS 3.2, and I hope you enjoy OTRS 3.2 when it comes out. Please be uh, aware we need beta testers, so any type of testing that you can do and reporting is of great importance to us. And I hope you subscribe. I hope you uh, enjoy this channel so much that you tell your friends and spread the video and spread OTRS. Thank you. Bye-bye.